All right, guys, here we are. Welcome back. Welcome back. And, um, you know, the, the, the phonology is really the longest, the longest um, part in this, in, in this training session, the longest part in this. You can, you can, you, I'm not calling it a, a class because we are all learning from one, another, from one another. We are sharing what we know, what we have learned in the past few years from, you know, personal experiences and more. So we, we, we prefer to call it an English training session. Yes, it is an English training session. Here we come back again. Um, we come back again, but this time is to show you how to use the American English phonology. You will, of course, you have learned the, you have learned earlier um, the, Amer the, the pronunciation, the American English phonology, um, the pronunciation key, and the very specific pronunciation symbols. Now, we will be showing you how to use them. For example, um, you may ask yourself, okay, teacher Abraham say this symbol is O, this symbol is A, that symbol is OI, this symbol is TH, that symbol is THAT, this symbol is U, that symbol is U, and this symbol is J. Teacher A and teacher Abraham also gives certain, um, certain examples, like O as in O as in bone, R as in law, OI as in choice, TH as in thing, the as in that, u as in call, u uh, as in put, pure, good, could, book, and um, zh as in measure, treasure, vision, garage. Yeah, teacher, um, I, I know you, you're wondering, or you might say, uh, you may say to yourself, teacher Abraham said these, said, set these phonetic symbols on the paper, on the chart, and then how can we use them? How will we be able to use them? Let me show you how to use them. Mr. Felix, can you take your phone? I need to show the people on Facebook how to use this. No, no. Okay. First so now, so now, um, what? First of all, you see, you see your, your icon. I can. Uh, I can, I can um, Webster. And then you go in to. Yeah. You click on it. You click on it. You can just push this yes, that way. No problem. Yeah. And then you see our space. You see our space where you search. Yeah. And then you or, or you can call it the search bar. Yeah, search bar. Yeah. You just put the word. The word. So you can put any words, Felix? Any word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Meanwhile. Okay. Okay. Here you go. Let me put. Meanwhile. Let me just put further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Here, you, you don't even yeah, need to yes, continue. Okay. okay. Okay, you see? So. And if you want to hear the voice of the word. Yeah. So, guys, what, what I really need you to understand is that um, in English, or when you're using an English dictionary, the, any English dictionary, it can, it's, you know, this is a, a, an app. This is an app. And even if we had a country dictionary, it would be the same. They, they put the word first, they put the word first, and you see how they separate the word syllable per syllable? It is to, to facilitate the pronunciation. It is to help you easily pronounce the word. So, firstly, the dictionary will give you the phonetic before giving you the meaning of the word. That is to say, the phonetic or the phonology is really important. So, this, um, as, we, as we saw it earlier, E R, that's er. So the the um, the upside down E is with the R is er. So this word is fur, and then the the um, the th with the line beneath it is the. So the word is fur, there, and because of the accent mark, you have to stress on fur. So you have to say further, further. So this word is further. And what is really interesting about the app is the fact that, for example, further, further is an adverb. The meaning is to or at a more distant place or time. The second meaning for it is to a greater degree or extent. Um, yeah. Yeah, to a great, uh, the, the, the second um, definition is to a greater degree or extent. The third addition, the third, sorry, the third example is 
in addition to what has been said. Let's say, for example, I don't know how to pronounce this word. I mean, A D D I T I O N. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. Stay, stay. Okay. I need to show people something because they will also learn how to use the dictionary too. For, let's say, for example, so you, so Felix, you didn't know this. You will learn it too because yeah. you don't need to to type down this word. You don't need to type down the word addition. I was sure this is exactly what I was going to show the people, the viewer, the viewers. So. Let's say, for example, I don't know the pronunciation of A D D I T I O N. What do I need to do? I don't even just because it is part of the um, it is part of the definition of the word further. It is part of the the definition of the word further. So I don't even need to I don't even need to 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 t type it down to write it down and uh, to write it down in the search bar. So all I need to do I need to go there um, and did this. And as soon as I did this, you see, I have it here. And as I told you, um, this is a, as in about. This one is a, as in lick. And this one is a, so that's shun. So this is a, de, shun. So this is a, and you have to stress on, on, on de because you, you, you see the accent mark. You see the stress mark on on day, before day. You see the stress the stress mark. You see the stress mark before day. So it's like a uh, e a. If I'm only pronouncing the word phonetically without um uh, if I'm just pronouncing the sounds without adding any any consonant with them, I would I would say a uh, e a. So I would stress on this saying addition. And this word also this word has two pronunciation as you can see it here. The, you can say addition. You can say Addition, addition. This is why this is why they put the the a. So, so now this is how to use the phonetic symbol. So once you learn the symbols, you have to use them. You have to make sure that um, you have to make sure. Yes, once you have the symbol, you have to use them. You have to make sure. You have to make sure that each each time um, when you um, before pronouncing any words, you have to go to your dictionary to make sure you find the right pronunciation. That is very interesting. So, this is what Mr. Robinson did. This is what Mr. Robinson did. He was looking for a list of word. The first word is is. Uh, the the pronunciation of you see as you can see here, it's a e, so it's between. The first word is between. The second word is a uh, al, so it's about. The the third word is during. The fourth is behind. And we have b beyond. We have beyond. We have against. We have around. Among. Beside. A I beside we have into into oh Robinson forget to put the stress mark uh, on this word so because you see into or into I, um I don't see where I have to stress so remember it, it's the same thing for beside beside is not really correctly is not correctly written why just because I don't see where to put the stress mark um I, I know the stress um. I know the stress mark. I know the stress is on side, so it's beside. Mr. Robinson has to put it uh, before the S. It's like he it did for among. You see, among has a little mark. You see the mark, as it did for among, around. Okay. And once we go down, what we see, we have. Oh, finally, Mr. Robinson didn't didn't really complete this word uh, for finally, and we have fur furthermore, we have. However, for however, the stress is on a, eh, yep, however, the stress is there. And we have therefore, we have otherwise, we have moreover, we have likewise, meanwhile, um, nevertheless, nevertheless, and we have anyway. This was the work of Robinson. Um, yes, guys, like I said earlier, to be able to, to um, 
speaking English like a Native American is not, it's, it's no magic at all. Yeah. All you need to do, you need to learn how to pronounce the word, the words. And after learning how to pronounce the words, you have to make sure you put what you've learned into practice. Meaning that if you learn the American English phonology, you have to use the American English phonology in your daily conversation every single day. Now let's take a look at the work of Mr. Felix. Oh, hi, Steve Mateus. Shout out for you, man. Much love, much respect. You were, I mean, oh, you, you are a source of inspiration. I, I have to tell you honestly, my friend, when I first joined Toastmasters Club, when I first joined Amethyst Toastmasters Club, man, I'm telling you, you are so, you were so excellent. You were an example among the, among the English speakers. Firstly, you, you, you were, you were one of the, the speakers, one of the Toastmasters at that club that was, uh, that I was impressed you know, you impressed me with your English. You impressed me not only with your English, with your professionalism, uh, the way you always dress, the way you present in your speeches, your every single thing. Shout out. And I'm happy that I'm happy that we have lots, lots in common. I'm happy that um, we, uh, we kind of think the same way because we here to progress. We just need Haiti to move forward. We just need the world to progress positively. And shout out for you, my friend. Much respect, much love. And thanks for watching my video. Yeah. So this is the work of Mr. Felix now. Um, yes, like I said earlier, before they're giving you the, um, the meaning of, of any word, they will put the pronunciation. I don't think I need to, I don't think I, I need to go through and, and repeat what and pronounce every single word Mr. Felix has, is, oh, really, um, I, I, I think, I think I definitely need to, to pronounce uh, certain words. Why? Because you pronounce them, you, 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 mis you, you always, uh, pronounce them incorrectly when speaking, especially this word because most Haitians usually say because I don't know it's 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 a ah oh, it's not because I don't know it's not because it's because you uh you, you can say because you can say because you can say uh because you uh, you can say because but you have to you have to focus which one you have to you, you want to adapt and mostly the American would not say because they would. You, uh, they would mostly say because or cause, uh, cause of, because of this, because of that. All right, and what other word? Okay, I think we're cool on that. So make sure you you use your your phonology daily, so that you can have a better pronunciation. Thanks, Felix. I don't know. Oh, um, not that. It's not. I don't know. This is important. Can you can you read your can you read the word yourself? Okay. For the people, Robinson, you will do the same too. Robinson, can you Accord. hold? Can you hold for him? Yes. Can you hold the camera for yeah. him? And make sure the yeah. word is. Make sure you see. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Accord. Addition. 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 Yes, you have you have to respect the yeah. the, the the mark. Yeah. Uh, the the stress. Addition. Yeah. Addition. Mm -hmm. Toward. Bennett. No, beneath. I think beneath. Yeah. Beneath. With. Without. Except. Because. Beyond. Between. 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 Under. Regard. Also. Final. Further. Instead, similar, incidental, but it is, it is all the word I have to, to read for you, then I'm going to leave, then I will give the, Mr. Robinson, Mr. Robinson to, to read his word also. Okay. Between, about, during. Behind, beyond, against, around, among, beside, into, 
finally Fatimo Arever Arever Therefore Otherwise Moreover Likewise Meanwhile Nevertheless Anyway Okay Okay, um, it was um, all. Yeah, all uh, I have to say about the word. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Now we uh, now we are going to move to to the conjunctions. Where where is the paper for the conjunct conjunctions and preposition? So. That is that is the list of words for prepositions and conjunctions. Uh, what what do they say for the prepositions? They say prepositions show relationships between nouns and pronouns and other words in terms of space, time, and other senses. Listed below are some commonly used prepositions. We have about, we have above, according to, across. After, against, along, among, around, as, as well as, at, because of, before, behind, below, beneath, beside, between, beyond, by, by way of, down, due to, during, except, except for, for, from, in, in addition to, in front of, in place of, inside, in spite of, instead of, into, like, near, of, of, off, on, or on, unto, out, out of, over, next to, through, toward, under, until, up, upon, with, without, with regard to. And we also have um, coordinating conjunctions. And coordinating, coordinating conjunctions connect words, phrases, and clauses with, which are grammatically equal. They cannot, for example, join a verb and a noun, a phrase and a clause, or a main clause and subordinate clause, but are yet so far and nor and for subordinating conju uh, subordinating conjunctions signal the relationship between subordinate clauses to main clauses a subordinate clause cannot stand along as a sentence even though it contains a subject adverb below are the most common subordinating conjunctions try placing any of any one at the beginning of a main clause complete idea and note how it no longer reads as a complete sentence um, let me only say the ones we haven't seen before although as if as though even though in order that once rather than since so that then that though unless until when whenever where wherever why and we also have relative pronoun, relative pronouns. Relative pronouns are special kinds of subordinators which introduce clauses that describe nouns and are therefore called adjective clauses. A relative pronoun always follows the noun it, de it, des um, it describes, which, that, what, whatever, who, whoever, whom, whomever, and whose. And we also have conjunctive adverbs that connect main clauses. Unlike subordinators, um, conjunctive adverbs do not, do not affect the completeness of an idea and can be moved to different positions in the sentence. If used between two complete ideas, conjunctive adverbs require a semicolon between the main clauses and a common on the other side of, a, uh, on the, other side of the conjunctive adverb. If used with one complete idea, um, conjunctive adverbs should be surrounded by commas unless they begin or end a sentence. F uh, and we have also anyway, besides, certainly, finally, furthermore, however, incidentally, indeed, instead, likewise, meanwhile, moreover, namely, nevertheless, next, now, otherwise, similarly, still, then, therefore, thus, undoubtedly. Right, these are the prepositions and conjunctions.